What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we're playing Morgana and this video was actually requested by one of our subscribers called the Nightmare Epic, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so yeah, this is kind of just uh, based on that request. I usually don't play a lot of support, uh, I know how to play the role, I play it fairly well, uh, but it's not personally my favorite thing to play. Uh, but Morgana is a really fun one. So if you are into the support role, uh, th this is actually both a great place to start and also a champ that you can go really far with. Like this champion is honestly, you can play her to really, really high rating without any problems. She's a champ that in my opinion is uh, fairly simple, yet had, has a lot, of like a lot of depth to her. Uh, like you can really get good with her. And uh, and that's kind of the fun thing with her. There's a lot of there's a lot of death to this champion. So personally, I think this is a champion you can play as a brand new player to the game if you just want to try out the support role. She works well with a lot of different ADCs. I know, especially from the ADC perspective, uh, that's one of the things that I play the most is playing ADC. And yeah, she's just really really good, especially with champs like Caitlyn, Jinx, etc. The reason why it's so good with Let's say, example, as an example, what we're playing with here, a Caitlyn is that whenever I put down a snare with Morgana, then she's going to be able to just put a trap underneath it, and we're going to have three set up to three seconds snare from Morgana's own, uh, from her own snare plus the uh, the snare from plus the snare from uh, Caitlyn. So yeah, as you might imagine, it's pretty much a kill every time you hit a snare uh, if she puts down the trap and just chain it. Uh, but yeah, this champion is my opinion for anybody. And if you are a mediocre or very experienced player, um, that just kind of want to swap into the uh, support role, or maybe just need a new fresh champion to play, then she's actually a really, really great choice. Um, so definitely something that you should, ooh, that you should look into. Uh, but yeah, that aside, let's talk a little bit about how she actually works and what makes her so freaking good. Um, first of all, we have her passive, and her passive is called Soul Siphon. And her passive is actually something that a lot of people don't know much about. Uh, but it, it's, it is a fairly good spell. The thing is that since not a lot of people know about it, then there's not really... I don't think people really realize what it does. Uh, it's very simple. What it does is that every time that um, Magana does some kind of damage to either a big monster, which means like uh, the cannon minions, neutral monsters as we have here in the forest, or a champion, then 20% of the damage she deals with her spells um, deal whoop, heal by 20%. I actually should save, save this one. All right, let's see. Uh, I actually should have saved my black shield for uh, Caitlyn there. I didn't think she was going to go in, so... Let's make sure that we just poke them a little bit here. Um, but a lot of people actually don't know that it, that Magana has this passive healing from, uh, from hitting her spells onto target. So it's a pretty cool thing and something that you kind of need to keep in your head because sometimes it's going to allow you to stay in lane a little longer. Or yeah. Just in general, it's it's gonna help you. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why I think Magana got this this passive is to make her more viable in the mid lane, and she is actually also a viable mid laner. But mostly, she works really well as a support. Um, so that's what you want need to think about her as. And right now, I'm just throwing down my W. And the reason for this is that I want to make sure that I get. Oh, my actually be able to. Uh, Gonna get some damage in there on them. Um, I'm just making sure that we get something from our spell thieves uh, item. All right, so that's all our passive does. 20% healing from hitting our spells onto big minions, neutral uh, monsters, or uh, champions. It's very, very, very simple. But really, really good. As you can see here, right there. Uh, she chained very well together with my snare, and this forced actually forced a lot of damage onto uh, Nautilus. He was just stuck there for four straight seconds, just eating all our damage. 
But yeah, that brings us to our Q. And our Q is probably the most fun spell with Magana, or at least one of them. And that is her Dark Binding. And this one is very simple. It does a good chunk of damage. And uh, oop. I'm actually just going to... It's a little annoying. See if I can... Uh, if this guy comes down here, I might be able to get a snare. Okay, no. I just want to get my procs on this guy. Get some of that gold in there. We're just playing a little careful, okay? So, Caitlyn want to be back, so that's what we're going to do. But yeah, our Dark Binding is a really big part of, or actually the primary reason why you want to play Magana. Uh, her Dark Binding, binding is, the, is her... Uh, Oops, let's buy this. Um, it's her, her, like, it's, I don't know what to say. It's called a dark binding. Like, this is what it looks like. Whenever this hits a target, a champ, a minion of any sort, then it stops there. It doesn't go for, it doesn't go through anything. It just stops there and it snares that target for up to three seconds at max rank. And this snare is insane. It deals a good chunk of damage. And it's just so easy for anybody to follow up on it. And also it chains very well together with the rest of her spells. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all it does. It's very, very simple and uh, very, very, very good. Her next spell is called Tormented Shadow. And this one has a little bit more depth to it. It's a little kind of a... Yeah, it's kind of a weird spell. Um, what this thing does is that it puts down like this pole of dark matter or whatever you can call it that deals a fair chunk of damage. It, the thing is that this thing deals more damage uh, depending on how much missing health the enemy has. So the lower they are, the more damage you deal. Uh, that's how this spell scales. Also, um, the thing is that every time it ticks, then it reduces the cooldown or resets 5% of the cooldown on this spell. And uh, it's a kind of a cool feature because this means that the more targets it hit, the better. However, this only works on big minions, it works on neutral monsters, and it works on champions. It's not any target uh, that gets whoop. It is not any target uh, that gets this uh, this proc going. So it's something you gotta know that yeah. It's a nice way. You, the more if if you can hit your pole on five people at once, um, you get your cooldown back fairly fast because it it works on every tick. And the thing is that you're tormented this pool, it deals damage every half second. So it deals damage really, really frequently. And then the lower health they are, the more damage that they take. Uh, usually what you want to do is that you want to chain your W together with your Q. So you hit your Q and you pull on top of it right after. And you want to try and see if you can... Uh, whoop, let's, let's not die here. We should be fine. Alright. You drop. Um... It chains really well together with your other spells. Oh, that was a close one. So we actually lack some vision here, so we need to be a little careful. I have my binding back pretty soon, so we should be fine. But yeah, that's all your tormented shadow with us. Uh, it's pretty simple and pretty fun. Like, it, it's really nice for wave clearing. Uh, whoop. Come on, take the kill. Take the kill. Oh my god, I was trying to leave the kill for him and he actually didn't get it. That, <laughs> that kind of sucked. Okay, I guess I should have put an ignite on. That's like a safety precaution. Alright. Whoop, needs to be a little careful. I think we should just back out here. Oops. Shadow didn't mean to, uh... As one might think. I could have gotten, gotten probably kills here. Also, I could have chained my ult together with uh, with the snare. But we'll talk more about that right now. I'm just trying to explain the champion. Then we'll get a little bit more into the nitty degree of actually doing really well. Uh, so I think I'm actually not going to buy that one. Because I do... Whoop, did I... What can I undo? Okay, apparently I walked out. I'm just going to wait four seconds. Because I need a control ward. 
because we really need to and this is one of the primary things when playing support is to control vision and i'm saying this now and i'm probably going to fail somewhat on it throughout this video because i am trying to focus on explaining how to play the champion but remember as a support also as any other role vision is key it is super super important and uh yeah also make sure that you support your your adc and what i mean with supporting your adc now i play the adc role a lot so i basically i really know what this entails i needed to swap my ward here we need scrying or orb but i forgot i apologize for that but that means don't go for the kills yourself of course rather kill secure than not getting the kill at all but your objective as a support is enabling your your adc and this means that you don't want to heart carry you don't want to get a lot of kills of course if you have to you need to take it but you need to su support your adc meaning that you need to stop anything that tries to get to your adc that's your objective you don't need to try and assassinate the backline or anything else that was kind of a sidetrack we'll talk more about that as we uh, as we've kind of gotten done explaining the abilities uh but yeah we've explained so far the passive qw her next ability is her black shield and her black shield is a really big part of also what makes makana so freaking good um what this thing does is that it puts down a shield let's just make sure oh. I won't be able to. I I was trying to pull it off. Rip. Okay. Um, <laughs> what your E does is that it, it allows you to put down a black shield. Uh, this black shield, what it, what it gives is that it gives a portion of shield to uh, the, the target you put it on. You can put it on yourself or any of your teammates. And it gives uh, some shield, obviously. Apart from that, it also basically absorbs magic damage or one magic damage thing so while the black shield is on what happens is that you cannot get crowd controlled by anything until you get hit by some type of magic damage then the black shield disappears or if it the or if the duration which is five seconds passes so that's this kind of just how it works we forgot the scrying or begin because i'm talking and i'm an idiot um but that's kind of how it works. It's pretty simple. You pit, put the shield on. We'll just do it here so you can see how it looks like. This is the shield. If magic damage hit, hits it, it disappears, but it still neglects any uh, crowd control from that magic damage or any other type of crowd control uh, until it takes magic damage, it will stay. So if it's physical stun or snare, it will not remove it, uh, which is very, very cool. So it's something you need to know. That's all your black shield does. You always want to pop this as early as possible. Uh, like when we fought before, I should have popped it before Nautilus hit with his uh, grab. Because that way, she, like Caitlyn wouldn't have moved anywhere. So that's really, really what you want to do. And we need to make sure that we get our props here. To be able to uh, get a kill. I actually really, really did not want that kill. I was just super afraid of dying. Uh, we do have or stopwatch now, so I should actually just have kept an eye for that one. I still have my flash. Gonna get this. There we go. I'm gonna get or black shield up as our second thing. Whether by chains or by wings, we all right. So far, so good. We are pushing the turret pretty well. And this should be able to be like good turn damage. Get, gonna get the black shield onto this guy. Come on. Yep. All right, he got it. Nice. I am really trying to let him get the kills because we want to enable this Caitlyn as much as we can. Oh wow, really? All right, so we need to back out. We're both pretty low. So far, so good. Or Caitlyn is now two kills. He's, she's. Also a head in farm, and we have one. So a total of three kills in our lane, and they actually have nothing there. All of their kills are summed up onto this Catfix, which is really good for us, to be honest. So we're in a really, really good state at this point. Uh, so next up, I kind of want to finish off. Let's see, I'm gonna, I need the movie, movie boots and get that one. We need to get ourselves some new control wards, gonna buy two. Oh, we need this scrying orb. 
because otherwise I'm going to forget that one. All right, our last spill, and I'm sorry that I'm so slow. I'm just trying to like squish in as much information as possible. Then we'll get a bit into flash plays, etc. afterwards and the combos. But um, let's just finish off the uh, the spell. So our last spell is called Soul Shackles. And this is uh, Magana's ult. It's a very, very cool spell. Um, and what this thing can do is that whenever you pop it, and it, it's actually kind of cold because... It has quite a far range that anything inside this one, when you click it, then you're going to have these shackles thrown to them. If you uh, manage to stay close enough... Ooh. If you manage to, uh, to stay close enough to your target, um, or that stay within this uh, radius of your target, uh, for those three, for three seconds, then that target gets stunned. Which is very cool. It deals a good chunk of damage whenever they do get stunned. And uh, yeah, everybody within this one, which means that you can... If if you jump in there and uh, use your ult on five people, then you can actually stun five people at once. Also dealing a good chunk of damage. Uh, the downside is if, if somebody runs out of this uh, circle's radius, then you... Oh, I need to support my ADC. Kind of not just looking everywhere else. Um, if somebody runs out of this radius, nothing happens to them. So that's kind of the downside. But whenever you do pop your old, then it while the shackles are on them, they get slowed. Their movement speed is slowed, which means that it, it's pretty difficult for people to get out of this one. That's something you really, really want to be aware of. Whoops. Get that. We are getting some good damage in there. And actually, I need to uh, be really careful here because I need to have my black shield. I should save that for uh, for Malphite's ult right now. But so far, so good. Oh, Caitlyn is doing a fairly decent job. I'm not complaining at all. Question is, we could take the rift if she wants to. I feel like she doesn't. One guy's coming up here. So this should be uh, pretty easy. I'm gonna put black shield on her. Make sure, and then I'm just going to try and see... Oh, God. Okay, nice. That was kind of what I was hoping for. I really, really do want everything to go on to uh, Or onto our ADC. But yeah, let's just really quickly refresh our ult. Our ult slows any target within this circle. If the shackle manages to stay onto a target for a full three seconds, then they become stunned, and it deals a good chunk of damage. Um, so this is kind of how everything works. Ideally, what you always want to do is you want to try and chain your Q and your ult together. This can be done in various different ways. Let's see, uh... We don't have any mana here, so I actually just kind of need to get out. Both Caitlyn and Vike are assumed. So far, so good. But you want to try and chain these two together, because that's going to give you a really, really long crowd control onto your targets. So... How do you do this best? And uh, it's actually kind of dependent on the situation. Um, let's see, we need to get that one. And I think we're going to go ourselves for like an ardent sensor. I think. Uh, or rivery. We could also do that. Let's let's go for this one. This is going to make it a little easier for us to, uh, to get some of those snares in there. And also just an entirely enabler or team uh this item has a usage that increases or ma or, or or movement speed for a brief moment which is really really freaking good um so yeah we're gonna get that one can break your i feel like that's gonna work well with what we're doing right now and we're gonna just go down to support our adc we just need to stay close to her all the time to, to, to try and hear anything that tries to get to her that is our objective uh but yeah chaining or spells together that I will okay, nobody wants it. I guess I'm gonna... Okay. Uh, but chaining our spells together is kind of dependent. In laning phase, if your enemies have used their flashes, um, then what you actually want to do is you always want to try to uh, to use your ult first. Because if they can't flash away, then you can be 100% sure that you are going to hit your snare. 
What I mean with this is that if you can't get away from your ult, then you get the stun. And then you can run literally up close to them and instant snare them as soon as the stun is over. Uh, you can also do this at range, but this, of course, requires a little bit of practice. Practicing kind of the, uh, the duration of your, uh, your stun plus the travel time of your... Uh, or minus <laughs> your travel time of your snare such that it hits just after the snare is over or the stun is over. Um, otherwise, if you're not able to do this and they do have their flash, then using your Q and then following up with all is of course ideal because uh, you don't want to flash and then they flash and you don't hit anything. Because if you just flash over there, all they flash out, then you've just wasted your ult and your flash. Uh, and that way you want to force their flash first using... Whoop, I'm gonna just try and make sure that I'm close enough to my whoop to my ADC, keeping an eye out with her position. Okay. I'm gonna stun just to get that guy off. And we should be able to get the kill that guy. And this guy should die as well. Thank you. And now I'll die. <laughs> I did not play that perfect in any way. Oops, I got out of the way. There we go. Let's get that one. And let's have a look. So right now they're doing really, really... Like, they're having a rough time. Let's have a look at what we can do here. So I'm feeling like an Ardent Sensor would make sense. So let's get that one. And an extra pink ward. So right now, this game, it's not been a perfect game in any way, and that's kind of like not the point. The point is just to kind of showcase and explain to you guys how the champion works, if it's a champ for you, and uh, what you need to think about. So yeah, in general, when playing a champ like Magana, and in general, when you're playing a, in my opinion, a real support, your primary objective is to help your ADC. Uh, and what I mean with this is just stay close to him, not necessarily directly on top of him, and, but but like stay close to him in a way where you're able to always stop people before they get to your ADC. Uh, so what you want to be looking for when playing Magana is using your black shield before your ADC gets caught, not after. So if a Blitzcrank tries to grab, get your black shield on before the grab goes off such that it absorbs the shield instead of taking Caitlyn there or your ADC there and she's dead even if you get the shield on her afterwards so you need to get it on prior to the damage that's the important thing it's always better to get it on before whenever somebody runs to your ADC or tries to uh, to force their way to it you need to use your cooldowns to enable your ADC to kite away uh, the way you do this is using your snare, uh, if they're running to it, uh, using your ult, chaining these two together, and of course black shielding as we talked about. Uh, this is the key features of playing support for any ADC. I don't think there's any ADCs basically where you don't want to do this. You always want to try and peel your uh, ADC. The point of playing this is not to try and, uh, and carry the game. You carry the game by helping your ADC. You need to enable them. What That's what a support is. A support is an, an enabler. They need to make their ADC shine. And yeah, pretty often we see that the support doesn't get the credit they deserve. Uh, but with that said, like, they really, they are what makes the difference in the long run. Like, I can, I play a lot of ADC uh, and I can really feel the difference from whenever I get an ADC that knows how to play, knows how to enable their ADC and, and doesn't care about the kills. She like when, when people just wanna help you win the game, it goes much smoother. So yeah, I hope this kind of gave you an impression. In no way a perfect play by me, uh, but I hope it kind of showcased everything, gave you an idea of how to play Magana, how to use her spells. Uh, just quickly like summarizing, you always, if they have flash, Use your Q first uh, to force out the flash. If you hit your Q, then you can chain it up with your ult afterwards. Um, if they have used their flash, 
then you want to use your your uh, your ult and then q and also you can do like if they have no flash you can flash to them click ult they're going to be slowed you can get a stun on both of them chain up with your q and always remember to put down your uh, your uh, tormented shadow as well your w uh it deals a good chunk of damage use it to uh to get your spell thieves procs to get that extra gold rolling yeah i i hope you kind of gave an idea or this kind of gave an idea of how to play Morgana and what you need to think about but just please if you are support out there it is so important that you understand and i think a lot of you guys probably know uh, a lot of you guys who are playing support knows this but your job is to make sure that you make your adc shine you are the secret to a good adc i'm telling you guys so I'm a, I'm primarily ADC mid laner and top laner, so I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for supporting us. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I really do. You guys make us shine from time to time, which is really nice. But yeah, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe down underneath if you haven't already. It really means a lot to me. It's been so freaking amazing to see how much we've grown just over the past month like literally we've been growing with about 1500 subs in a month which is something i never thought i would achieve so thank you guys i really do appreciate it uh for those of you who haven't already noticed we got ourselves a new mic i hope you guys like the sound might have to do some adjusting throughout the next couple of videos but uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy it <laughs> cringe no anyway uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button. It really helps this video get out to as many people as possible. But that is going to be it for this video. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.